Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be learning on nitrogen and its compounds and you're going to look at the isolation of nitrogen in air. So we are going to look at the different um, ways in which nitrogen can be isolated in air. We will look at a small in small scale uh, section and also large scale and then you're going to get also an opportunity to practice on some questions. Uh, so first of all, nitrogen is about 78% of the atmosphere. We said, we said it's the highest percentage uh, gas in the atmosphere. The atoms in the molecule are actually firmly held by a triple board. So when you look at nitrogen, it has a triple board. And when we draw that, we know nitrogen is atomic number seven with configuration of 2.5 that tells you that it requires three electrons to be completely full so when we draw the molecule it's going to look like this so we know when we talk about the triple board we know every one covalent board represents a pair of shared electrons so you know the first uh, pair is going to be shared and the second. Remember each of the nitrogen each contributes three electrons since they require three electrons to be completely full. So two electrons are left in the outer in the as the the uh, the ones that have not boarded. So you put two here and two here. So this is how nitrogen molecule looks like. It has very strong uh, triple board, uh, the one that makes it to have a low reactivity with chemical reactions. In presence of air, uh, like uh, dilute oxygen uh, slows down uh, respiration, burning and rusting. So it's the one that slows down these reactions. So when we come to preparation of nitrogen, we said that we can isolate it from air. So one of the ways that we can isolate it from air is just a simple setup. When you look at this setup, air gets in uh, in the water is uh, allowed in the aspirator. And when the water is allowed in the aspirator, it pushes the air outside the aspirator into the tube. And then it passes through concentrated potassium hydroxide solution. And then it continues to pass through the copper tannings, which are heated. And finally, the gas is collected. So this is a setup for the isolation of nitrogen from air. So air is driven out of the aspirator by passing water, as we have said, into the aspirator from a tap. And then air is passed through a wash bottle containing a concentrated potassium hydroxide. And the purpose why it is passed through potassium hydroxide is to remove carbon dioxide from air. And then uh, these are the reactions. So uh, potassium hydroxide reacts with some carbon dioxide in the air to form potassium carbonate and water. Remember, this is a bit different from calcium hydroxide, which forms a white precipitate. In this case, this is just going to be a colorless solution. And remember, salts of potassium are soluble, so you will not see a white precipitate. And then the uh, potassium carbonate continues to react with more carbon dioxide to form potassium hydrogen carbonate and then we said that the carbon free air is then passed to a combustion tube with heated copper metal so the reason why we pass it there is to remove oxygen from the air uh, in this reaction the brown copper metal is oxidized to black so there is a color change or observations that you're going to see the brown copper is going to turn to black and this is the equation, copper, copper plus oxygen forms copper 2 oxide, which is uh, black in color. So oxygen can be removed by passing um, carbon four oxide uh, uh, through a pyroglaric acid, which also absorbs some of the oxygen. And then the remaining part of air is mainly nitrogen and is collected over water. But we know that this isolation of air does not uh, fully like produce a pure amount of nitrogen gas. The ga nitrogen gas that is produced in this setup is not pure. This reason is because we know the gas that we have produced here, also part of it, we have the rare gases, or in, the, in this case, argon. Argon is part of the um, 
of the gases that are collected with nitrogen. So for us to make it as pure as possible, we'll use a different method, which is a fractional distillation of air. But before we go to the fractional distillation of air, let's look at the summary of what we have just discussed. So we know air contains carbon dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen, noble gases, mainly argon, water and dust particles. So when it is passed through potassium hydroxide concentrated, it removes carbon dioxide and then it is left with oxygen, nitrogen, noble gas, water vapor and dust particles. If you pass it through the combustion tube containing copper metal, it removes oxygen or pyroglyric acid, it removes oxygen and then you are left with nitrogen but it's not pure as you can see. We have some noble gases, some water vapor and some dust particles. So I said that the best alternative is fractional distillation of air. This is the uh, industrial process that produces a very highly percentage and concentrated amount of nitrogen, which is a bit pure in comparison to the process that we have just uh, discussed. So liquid air is primarily a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen with small amounts of noble gases. That's why we say this is a fractional distillation of liquefied air. There is a place where we have to liquefy the remaining part of air and feed it to the fractionating column. That is where the name comes from. So when you look at the chemical process, you start with the first step, as you can see. So air is passed, um, is, re uh, is removed, the dust particles are removed from air and they're usually removed by two processes. First, there is electrostatic precipitation, and then there is filtration. So for electrostatic precipitation, air is passed through a positively charged plates in an electric field, and then the dust particles are attracted to the plates of opposite charges. So air, like when the air passes through those plates, the dust particles are left behind on the, uh, on the plates, they are attracted on the plates. The other method is filtration, where hair is passed through a series of filters which trap dust particles as the hair is forced through. So you can see removal of dust is done in two processes. So we have electrostatic precipitation and we have filtration. This is the first step as you can see on the flowchart. The second step is a removal of carbon dioxide and it is done by passing it through a solution of a concentrated uh, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. So it reacts to form, if you use potassium hydroxide, it will react to form potassium carbonate, which further reacts with carbon dioxide to form potassium hydrogen carbonate. If you are using sodium hydroxide, it would form sodium carbonate, and then further reacts with more carbon dioxide to produce uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate. So that is step two, as you can see in the diagram. So this is air now that we are moving to the st next step that doesn't have dust, nor does it have carbon dioxide. So the next step is the removal of water vapor in step three, and it is usually removed by passing it through a chamber containing concentrated sulfuric acid or anhydrous calcium chloride, where the water vapor is separated. These compounds usually absorbs water moisture from the atmosphere. That's why they are commonly used as drying agents. Alternatively, the water can also be removed by freezing it to a temperature of negative 25 degrees Celsius. When it does so, it changes to ice, it solidifies, and then absorbed by the silica gel and then separated out. So what happens in this negative 25 degrees Celsius, not only is the water vapor removed, but any carbon dioxide that is left behind that has not been separated in the previous chamber also solidifies. So the reason why we, we do this is to ensure that the water vapor and the carbon dioxide, when they get into the next chamber where there is even low temperatures than negative 25, they are not going to pull and cause a blockage. So we usually do that to prevent a blockage of the pipe, which uh, is caused by the solid materials at liquefaction temperatures. Those temperatures are so low that both carbon dioxide and water vapor will solidify. So that is step three. 
So we go to step four now where the remaining part of air is liquefied. So this is where the liquefaction of air occurs. So air free from dust, carbon dioxide and water is then compressed at about 200 atmospheres, cooled and allowed to expand through the fine jet. So there is that sudden cooling and expansion, cooling and expansion causes the air that is remaining to liquefy. So the liquid is tapped off through a valve while the gas is, is, is as a, which has escaped liquef liquefaction returns to the compressor where it is compressed more and then goes back again. So the liquid air is a transparent pale liquid um, and then it is taken to the fractional distillation which takes us to step five, which is the main thing in this process. So in the fractional distillation, the liquid here is heated and nitrogen, which has a boiling point of negative 196, and oxygen, which has a boiling point of negative 193, and also noble gases, which will have a boiling point of negative 193. So we say that, mm, the one that is lowest is one that is going to be distilled off first. So this this liquid air is allowed to warm up and then nitrogen boils off first because it has the lowest um, boiling point. And then the, the remaining liquid becomes richer in oxygen because you know the percentage of noble gas uh, in this liquid air is very low. So the top of the fractionating column is a few degrees cooler than the bottom. So oxygen with the highest boiling point collects at the bottom as a liquid. The gas at the top of the column is nitrogen, which has a lower boiling point. The more easily vaporized nitrogen is taken off. That way, 99.57 nitrogen is obtained. You can see this process is uh, we are obtaining a very pure uh, nitrogen in comparison to the previous um, process. So nitrogen distills off first, then followed by the noble gases, then finally oxygen. And oxygen is collected as liquid. So that brings us to the end of the fractional distillation of air. Let us do one question. So the diagram below represents a setup that was used, used to obtain dry nitrogen from air. Study it and answer the questions that follow. So we have air that is being passed through aqueous sodium hydroxide and then it's passed through the iron powder that is heated and then it's passed through solid Q and then it's collected in the syringe. So solid Q, solid Q that is used in a U-tube is usually anhydrous calcium chloride. Because it is used to remove the water. What is the purpose of sodium hydroxide? We said it's to remove or absorb carbon dioxide in air. And then write an equation for the reaction which takes place in tube P. So we have iron reacts with oxygen in the air to form iron 2 oxide. So this is iron is gray and then brown when it forms the oxide. Give, give the name of one impurity present in the nitrogen. So one of the impurities can be argon. We said we can have dust particles and also water vapor. So you can pick either. So that brings us to the end. Uh, see you in the next lesson as we look at the laboratory preparation of nitrogen gas.